Let's take another look at ROS based robots. In this second of two parts, we'll look at services and actions. Let's make that robot do something. Hi, my name is Sid Faber from the robotics team at Canonical. As we discussed in the first part of this video, all robots based on ROS are programmed using a few uh, simple but core concepts. Uh, nodes and parameters, topics, services, and actions. We talked about the first three in part one. Now we're going to cover services and actions, or making our robot actually do stuff. Once again, I'm going to be using simulated robots built on ROS Foxy. We'll use the straightforward turtle sim simulator that explicitly demonstrates many of these concepts. And then we'll also use the more complex TurtleBot waffle pie that's simulated in Gazebo. So let's suppose that you want your robot to do something for you. With messages, we saw that we could maybe turn things on and off, take some simple readings and such. But what if I want something that's synchronous and guaranteed? Or on the other hand, what if I want something that's asynchronous, might take a long time to complete, and might, I might want to preempt it along the way. That's where services and actions come into play. Services and actions are similar in many ways, but they're very different in others. I think it's probably easiest to keep in mind, first and foremost, that services are synchronous and actions are asynchronous. Uh, what that means is that when you call a service, when you send it a request, you wait for it to complete. There's no multitasking, no preempting, no queuing, no prioritizing. You just get the job done. Tasks, on the other hand, are more about preemptible goal-driven behavior. You ask the robot to try and do something for you. It'll tell you whether or not it thinks it can get that thing done, uh, and then uh, recognize that it might take a while, so it'll give you status updates along the way until the job's done. I think this will become more clear when we actually take a look at some of the services and actions from our simulators. Let's fire up our turtle sim simulator. Similar to other ROS commands we've used, there's a list command for both services and actions. So with the turtle sim running, we're going to issue the service list command to see what's in the graph. First thing to note is that all the parameter related services down at the bottom of this list. It's because ROS2 implements parameters as a service. We can actually set those aside for now. Just recognize that nodes that have parameters are also going to have these services listed. Here you can see the general purpose services for a robot. Clear the play field, kill or reset our turtle, and spawn a new turtle. All these are things that can happen immediately, so there's no need to wait for them to complete. And now let's take a look at the actions with the ROS2 action list command. There's just one action, rotate absolute. It takes time to rotate. We may want to have the robot do other things while we're rotating. So compare this to an uh, to, uh, action. It's not a teleport like a service that happens instantaneously. This is the actual turn rotation. Let's switch over to our TurtleBot simulator. Again, you see a bunch of parameter services here because there's lots of parameters, and most of them are related to the gazebo simulator. So we can trim that out, and as you see, most of these are simulation-related physics and so on. However, here we go. There's a set camera info service. This is actually a standard service that's used for, among other things, calibrating the camera. If you're following along using the TurtleBot, you'll see there are no actions. Actually, our basic installation just didn't set them up yet. However, you can dig into the TurtleBot documentation uh, and set up, for example, navigation. That's where you ask the robot to go from point A to point B, and it has to figure out the path. Perfect simulation for an action with a goal and periodic callbacks to update you on status. Now that we've seen a little bit about services, I'd like to try to call one. I want to use a service to spawn a new turtle in the turtle sim. Each service is defined, defines a specific interface type, and that's key to make sure that we send it the right data, a message type, and also to understand the data that we receive back. So that's done by using the service list dash T switch, or you could just use the service type command. 
So I have to send the spawn service a spawn message. But what is a spawn message? That's the, where the ROS2 interface command comes in handy. The interface command was added with ROS Eloquence. If you're using an earlier version, that won't work. Uh, these commands differ slightly. As you can see, the output's formatted in two sections separated by dashes. The top is the request, and the bottom is the response format, or the return data. This is actually just a service file, an SRV file that's used to program within ROS. And so you find comments and some other things like that from some of the more complex types. So now we have the information we need to actually call the service, and that's done using the ROS2 service call command. As you can see, we need three things. The service name, which we have, the service type, which we just found out, and the values. So the values have to be in YAML format and follow the type that we just saw in the request. We didn't get a lot of information about the, what the actual values mean for a spawn message. We can take a good guess and fill those out. So let's craft up a message and give it a try. This message should put something at uh, the two by two coordinates pointing at an angle of zero. That theta should be the rotation. Uh, it's gonna give it a name of tortoise. Try that again. Okay, that's interesting. The service returns the name of the newly created turtle as expected. And you can see how the X and Y coordinates work from the bottom left. And the theta really is the, the angle that the, uh, in radians actually, where the turtle's pointing. Let's use a service to kill off the two turtles we just created. If we do the same thing by looking at the interface uh, and figuring out the message type, uh, we can actually see that we just have to send the turtle, the name of the turtle, and then it'll disappear from the play field. Now let's take a look at actions. Action calls are pretty similar to service calls, but the syntax changes a bit. As you can see, once we find the type for the action, we need to send it a goal. Once again, the goal is just a YAML message, but what's the message type of this interface? Well, we use the interface show command. Where the service had two sections, an action has three. It has the request format, and then it has the response to the request. That's what we get back right away once the robot plans how to achieve the goal. But it also has the format or the periodic status update messages. So for our messages, all three of these are in angles and radians, but the name changes between the different message types. Okay, now we have what we need to set a rotation goal for the turtle, so we'll send it out. That looks just like a service, doesn't it? Now let's add the feedback switch so you can see the feedback loop in progress. I can cancel this while it's in the middle of turning. And also, I didn't tell it how to get to the angle and tell it whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise. The robot figured that out on its own. You can see this begins a bit of that autonomous behavior. I send the robot a goal. I trust it to figure out how to get to its goal. Well, that works as long as it's programmed well. So that covers the basics of ROS, right? Nodes, topics, parameters, services, and actions. Each of these have interfaces that communicate on predefined message types. But I want to take a second to take a look at one really handy feature of ROS. If you recall, we began this video in part one by talking about how ROS creates a graph structure with nodes and edges. Nodes have attributes, which we call parameters. The graph's edges are our topics, our services, and our actions. A cool feature of ROS is that the graph can be ever-changing. We can spin up and tear down nodes whenever we want. The robot can do that on its own once it's set up. Let's take a look at how that works with our turtle sim. First, see the turtle sim graph as it exists at startup. I'm going to use the node info command because it pretty much shows everything that's going on in the node. 
You can see what topics the node subscribes to, what topics it publishes, its service, and also its actions. Now let's spin up a few more turtles on the play field. Then let's take a look and see how the graph has changed. Are there any new nodes? Nope, spawning a turtle didn't actually create a node. But let's see if the node that exists actually has changed. Here you can see there's new topics, actually a new set for each turtle we spawned. There's also new services and new actions and so on. It's actually entirely reasonable to add and remove nodes from the graph programmatically as well. In fact, that's actually pretty common. Just keep this in mind as you continue exploring robots and you build your own. Simply looking at the ROS graph at a single point in time may not give you the whole picture of what the robot is. That graph is likely to change over time. Lots to digest there, and if I've done my job, your head should be swimming with all kinds of unanswered robotics questions. Things like, how often should my sensor send updates? Or, How's my action server going to know if a key sensor is going offline in the middle of an action? Or how am I going to make a big red stop safety button work? Is it going to be a call to a service or a reset goal sent to an action server? Or is it just going to be a message sent out on all kinds of topics? That means we're in a great place. With these fundamental concepts, you should now be able to start exploring more and more demo robots, training robots, understand how engineers have tackled these problems. So whether you're working on an airborne drone, a robot dog, a self-driving car, or any of the many, many robots, understand that they can all be built with nodes, parameters, topics, services, and actions. Again, my name's Sid Favor from Canonical. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.